I'm here in a coffee shop in East London, and like a thousand other places like this in the city, there are people sitting at their laptops checking Facebook and working on their novel or having a bite to eat with a friend. But unlike just about every other place like it in the city, this is also a working farm. The, the model that we've had for so long is that the production of food, the preparation of the food, and then yeah. the consumption of the food live in completely different worlds. Yeah. And you have, you know, kind of people who are paying, you know, all this money to have this beautifully produced and, and prepared food kind of delivered to them. Yeah. And, and they never kind of see anything else that's going on. God knows, participate in it, right? Yeah. And so a space like this is, it seems to be kind of all about blurring the boundaries between those yeah. different zones. It's that farm experience. When you're working on a farm, you get up really early in the morning and do everything. And my grandfather had a bell that he would ring, and everybody would come in and sit around this huge table and eat together. And that's uh, the vibe that I want to be yeah. in here. And um, yeah, to be able to like, come on, like, we've got eggs here that still have the chicken poo on them. I mean, uh, much more authentic. There we go. Yeah, yes. Lovely. Maybe know, a little so too authentic for yeah. me, but whatever. That's good. <laughs> yeah, slightly. They'll get washed. They'll get washed. And there's so many spaces, even in a city. Like London, I mean, I live most of the year in New York, very similar to London, two of the most expensive cities in the world to live in. But there are just all sorts of weird little kind of nooks and crannies in the urban landscape that can be filled with mini, yeah. mini agriculture. The tops of yeah. buildings and, and roofs, and we should be growing in every single space possible, you know, because it's so easy. And do you think looking kind of 10 years, 20 years out, that this is a model we're going to see more and more in I cities? So. I really, yeah. really hope so. It's a fashion thing, and so you're going to these cafes and restaurants that are all amazing and doing beautiful food, but you're kind of paying for the experience of eating something that's grown in their back garden. I'd like to hope that it was became less fashionable and yeah. more just essential. One of the things that's always been true of big cities in the, in the modern age is that places like coffee houses have been amazing generators of, of culture and ideas. People write novels in them, people dream up new startups, people come up with political movements in spaces like this. But the nature of the city and the way that cities have developed has meant that they're always dependent on rural areas, sometimes halfway across the globe, for the food that people eat. And what you see in a space like this is the possibility that maybe there's a new model for agriculture, a new model for the future of food in big cities where we take up spaces that have otherwise been neglected, rooftops of buildings, backyards, and turn them into spaces that are actually agriculturally productive. And it opens up the possibility that in the future of food, it's not just ideas that are being generated in the big city, but it's also the food we eat.